Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, the focus today is uh, training of, of leaders uh, in lean and leadership. And with me today, I have Jaat Frick. And yes, we made an, uh, an interview uh, on how to become lean for real. And this is not a second interview. But for those who were not with us last time, could you please just introduce uh, who you are and uh, your experience? Yeah, I'm, um, hello again. Uh, I have been uh, working in the industry the most part of my life. We have a slide here, but the important thing in this case is that since 1987, for some reason, started my lean journey. And I have the opportunity to work in different positions, both operational and as a facilitator in the General Motors, Saab, Scania. Volvo cars at latest, but also together with many Japanese senior consultants. So it's been a learning journey. I'm still in that. So I want to share with you my latest experience, you can say. Yeah, no, it's great to have uh, be able to interview you here, Jeff. And uh, in, the, in the previous uh, interview, we talked about lean leadership, and now we will talk about trainings of leaders. But um, I, I had one, one major takeaway, and that was, of course, the, the comment you made that many of our managers, they have worked many years as leaders, but in the traditional way of, of managing. And uh, uh, in order to become a role model and, and, and implement lean, we have to be the change ourselves and step away from, from old behaviors. You, you talked about some basic uh, leadership principles. Can you please uh, share them with us? Yes. You can say it's four, but they, well, what is very important, this means that you need to, as you said yourself, change the way of running the business from a traditional way mainly. Then you have to start with a change with yourself. If you're a manager, it doesn't matter which level. The more important the high up it is. So you really understand what's going to happen. You can't delegate your own change to someone else. You have also to create a vision and strategy and make clear together with the organization, what is the target and why are we doing this? And also study the current so you see the gap and see the opportunities. The third is that the way, this, that the core of this system is to solve problems, uh, detect problems and solve them to the root cause. That means that you have to be very good in gathering facts. And when you do that, you will have human development as a result. Because if you want to be world class, the more of your people that are solving problems, the better it is. But you need to be the teacher as a manager and ask the right question and uh, develop your people. So mm -hmm. these four things is very important. So um, in the earlier film, we, we asked about what is the difference compared to a traditional company in these aspects. So we will not, we will not go into that in this film. But uh, what I'm curious to understand now is the, the training that you are conducting in Volvo with, with upper management uh, in order to, uh, to change behaviors and to be, become stronger leaders and, and lean leaders. So um, why have you designed such a program uh, in Volvo to train the, the upper management? And, and how have you been thinking around designing the training itself? Uh, Volvo is very look like as many other companies, a long, long history. And uh, of course, you have developed a, a culture uh, to take in, uh, the company to where it is today. But to be competitive in the, f in the f future, you need to speed up the, the change. And the change, of course, is based on uh, reducing the cost and do only the right things. Um, so here's the, uh, yeah, so we can have a look at the overall program. Uh, so we can say, same, same, what is the difference? Yes, more detail. And I will uh, try to explain that. Uh, we're talking about, in uh, Volvo's case, uh, a, a group of 12 managers from all over the global uh, system, from China, Europe and US, selected by upper management. They are uh, factory managers mainly that start with this uh, course. And when they are selected, they come into a plant that are hosting them to have a concept week, a theoretical week. And the thing is that this 
is not just uh, the theory. The theory is also that you visit uh, practical examples so you can see what we mean. And uh, uh, so, so you get the first week you should have a good overview by looking to practical examples, reflect, also share what is you going to take with you. And then you get homework. And the homework is that you have to pre-study one process in detail and then we come to the next week. So we can take the next slide, I think. Uh, Before we do that, yeah, yeah. what is the difference uh, with this training than with a traditional training for, for uh, upper management uh, or factory management team? I would say that when you, when you do this, we can take the first week, what was very confusing sometimes for the hosting plant, uh, because the hosting plant normally, we show the best we have. And then I said to them, you shouldn't show the best you have. You should show what is better than you have, what you will be in three years from now in small areas. So you really have to practice, not what do the best you can. You have to do what you have to do, you can say. And also when we challenge the managers in the Kaizen week, you should have a little bit once a life experience in how detail you have to go and also change by yourself as much as possible by yourself yeah. not someone else but how was the training before how was the training so what is different with this setup than it has any been, training that i can say uh, it, there have been uh, better or not so good trainings but sometimes you use a lot of uh, um, we can say facilitators uh, and and you as a manager of course you are involved but you have not been involved in the way that you really see the opportunities when we're talking about go to Gemba and study for example and we talk about one to two hours and that's not enough when you when you learn you must go much much more deeper and otherwise you won't see the problem uh, so you can say it has been a mix in, in the past with um, offline trainings, with special uh, areas. Now we're talking about train in the normal um, environment. And we say mm -hmm. develop managers. We, we stop say training or manager. We say develop the managers in the, in the real environment. Were there any, let's say, were there any obstacles to doing this? Or were there any, any conflicts? arising when you did this? I um, can say that it helps if the top management say that this is need to be done. Uh, and of course, there, <laughs> once you started, people get really eager to learn more. And the more we, we, we developed to train people, the more they stepped in to see that we have a lot more to do. Mm -hmm. Of course, they, there is a conflict if you have a strong existing structure that you need to reform. There can be some conflicts and you must be prepared for that as a manager. Uh, that the people can resist them. Oh, we have a good system now. Okay, let's go and see then what we see. Mm -hmm. No game, but really you must be open to learn new things. Yeah. So that's the mindset that is needed uh, to be open to learn. Yeah. But the, of course, the company is, uh, has not been stupid in the past. They've done the best they could. And then it can be some frictions when you change to this. Yeah. All right. I know you have another slide. So let's look at the, the next uh, image. The next slide a little bit to, to illustrate uh, the whole system. Uh, of course, we start at the core, one where the value is created. Then the participants, we chosen one supplier. You can follow the flow and map what you see. Ask where is the standardized work done and what is the number of parts we should have. Uh, we looked very much into other areas than assemblies. We can, the full automatic areas or the full automatic areas uh, in the right so to say sh shape and very often in traditional plants we have over invested because we need to be secured that we get the right volume now we say we should have the right investment for the for the customer not more than needed for example and also uh, looked at teamwork problem solving examples very good ones 
So you get the whole, and also standardized inspection, the whole whole picture of uh, what you saw in the previous slide and the system, the standardized work, just in time, GDOCA, and flexible manpower and problem solving. So after this week, we can say the participants were a little bit confused on a higher level, but realized that you have to see this uh, is going together, the system. And okay, so, <clears throat> so is the, um, what, what, what is it that you want to achieve with the first week you know, and with this image? What is it? What I learned after the, the sessions I was uh, involved in is that very often uh, people come in and think very strict in different methodologies. And of course, there are methodologies, but they are so linked into, into each other. So you, you get a very clear picture that everything is linked to each other. This is a system you have to manage. Mm. That is the most important. It's a, okay. System. Okay, so it's a system perspective, the end-to-end -end perspective, that everything is uh, everything is connected, is connected yeah, to serve the customer, right? You can't run one piece flow if you don't have a very high quality. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for example, yeah. And Will you speak to the, the, the at the bottom? You have Muri for free, Mura Max Five percent. Would you please uh, comment that? I can comment that that little bit a mantra. You can say wait, we repeat we. And I can say my own old experience was very much on this Muda seven ways. This, but that's number three. You need to start with Muri free. That means that uh, the people working in organization, uh, working with different processes or even administration processes, is, are they possible to do without any interruptions? That is the first thing you need to solve with your subordinates. And that is so important to build trust. That's why I pointed out. Yeah. And Mura, Mura variation is the biggest uh, waste, to be honest. Mm. That's much, much bigger than this uh, traditional seven one. That's why we talk about it. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, and uh, then <clears throat> comes the next slide, I think. Then we come to the second week. This is created yeah. by this Gen Shigenbutsu. That means that these 12 managers, they have one process each around 60 to 70 seconds. They should study these um, operations very deeply in uh, three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and on Wednesday night, they should have detected and solved a lot of muris. They should have been able to get it more smooth operations. Uh, and then and on the Wednesday night, then we start to re rebalance and see what can we do together, these 12 people. But it's based on this very deep study. And first people realize, okay, three days in 60 seconds, that's an easy thing. And uh, But then I realize the more they study, the more they see as opportunities. And in the Wednesday, after a lot of work at, over time, they have solved a lot of things. Uh, to, uh, to, to help the operator by themselves. They get some help, of course, but the more you do by yourself, and uh, there were some coaches, I was one of them, we have three, three people each that we coach, were coaching in this, so they not, so, so they not get so frustrated, we help them. But you, the thing is, you have to learn to see, what is it you see, you see that the problem, solve them and you should solve it. And uh, so, so in the end of the week, after uh, five days, then you also have uh, gained a lot of result of this also. Good. This is the really deep, and I, I promise, first day I work only eight hours, the second day, 12 hours, the third day, 14 hours, and then you work more or less a whole day long, and but they really appreciate it. And, uh, Operators that were studied, they are happy with so many managers helping them. I will keep up. <laughs> Great. Okay, and then uh, what was the, uh, <clears throat> did you use any method when you did this? Uh, I can say it's, it's a quite, if you go into that, you can, that is based on what is it you see, what is the standard, because, and not standard, it's a difference between standard and standardized work. What is the best way to doing it? In, in this environment, uh, it normally produces 60 cars an hour. That's um, 
60 seconds per operator, then you have some rotation and you work uh, 24 hours uh, a, a day with this. And then you really need to have very good methods to train and, and see uh, how this can work smoothly. And so you can say standardize work, set the standard that uh, you have to describe with a pencil. I say we have reinvented a pencil and paper on Volvo and make sketches by yourself and, and uh, things like yeah. So you can say standardized work, problem solving. Good. All uh, right. And then you come, take the next slide, it's yeah. very important. When, when you come to the end of the week, and here's the same methods, even if it's coming first line managers or if it's top managers, then you have to produce this, what I call an A3. A3 is not only an A3, it's one board. You can see here, Eric, Eric is a Chinese guy. And uh, <clears throat> he has been studying a uh, number of stations, gathering facts. And there's some examples of a lot of problems we have, uh, we have solved. And uh, how much cycle time reduced and also implemented. And to, to the, the, the other picture shows the, uh, the director of production. So on Friday, all these 12 participants present what they have done to the upper management in the company and also make a statement. This is what I'm going to do when I go back to China or whatever I go. So it's a review. So this is very important also to train in this uh, way of presenting it. Mm -hmm. and, and, this, uh, and through the A3, they can present the whole a story uh, from the observations and the mm -hmm. problems they have addressed and then the, the solutions and the results, I take it. Because this guy you can see here, Eric, <clears throat> he, has, he knows more about this station than anyone else in Volvo. So he has the facts. So if someone else has another opinion, okay, I listen to you, but you haven't studied, so I know the truth to say. So it's very yeah. strong. Yeah. And also make a story is important, then you are going yeah. to sell it. Yes, yeah. good. So that is, and, and here is the team. And you can say, if you have asked them in the Monday morning, what are you going to achieve? Uh, <laughs> They maybe have some, some percentage, but they can do a lot in a week if you concentrate on this and really do, do it, so to say. And that yeah. is the thing. You, your self-confidence will also raise because you know that this is possible, which is a key when you're going to train your other managers and people. Mm -hmm. So, so this. Uh, so, what was the reaction um, <clears throat> after having achieved these great results that we look at here in only a few days? What, what was the? Uh, were so, they all surprised? Or they, did anyone expect this in, in in that short amount of time? Yeah, I can say if if you go in quickly and look at the production, which can look very efficient, but when you start to deeply study it then you see the opportunities to do much, much more than the normal 5%, so to say. Mm. And, and then if you do that yourself, then you, everybody thinks, I will do this when I come home, and I know I have the same by me. Yeah, that's a, that's a great takeaway. Okay, then you have an example of, uh, of another type of problem solving that. Um... This is uh, what I think is one of the best films I brought me from Volvo. You can say we had a problem in the interior with a Volvo XC60 and uh, the, the movie to the left, so to say, we take that first one and start. Should we, should we, should we start playing it? Or See if we can play it, yeah. yeah. The first one. Okay. So what we saw here was that she had a lot of problem to get it in place. She need to bang with her hands. She will have ergonomical problems. So in this case, three of our most clever managers in Gothenburg 
start to, to investigate and every, I measure everything. But then I start to look at the method and different people were doing. And one of the most, uh, so say, smartest guy, you can say, she's not, she is of course smart also, but to find a good way to do it, you can see it to the right, if you take another film. But, but I think it didn't Volvo go into seeing to redesign the part, part or finding different tools. That wasn't that the hypothesis? Yeah, so in this case, it's very easy to say, okay, my friends at R&D, you haven't done a good job. It's hard to get this interior in place. Of course, that must be a learning. Mm. But if you're in manufacturing, it can't be an excuse. You have to see what you can do in the way of methods. Yeah. And that, that, that encouraged me or us when we see this, that you can do a lot if you do it a different way. That's yeah. yeah, because I think the hypothesis from the beginning here was that there is something wrong with the design and it would, it would require a lot of effort to, to make that change. But then you, you started to look for alternative solutions. Design and purchasing and others, you know, it's very easy in, your, in manufacturing to blame others, but um, you can't be a victim. Okay. And you need also to be a teacher to the rest of the company. Okay, let's look at the, the next film. Yep. I think you, even if this is hard to see, but but he do it in a very smooth way. He don't bang anything with his hands. He do it in a good way. The quality is right. The ergonomy, ergonomy is right. The challenge is that you as manager must understand what you see when you go out and see these two persons and act. But uh, I think this is, I really like these pictures yeah. because That's they the impossible is possible to do in a quite simple way. Yeah. So the, the take you I, I have here is that there are there are operators and there are solutions somewhere. It's a matter of finding them and, and looking at them and spreading them. And, and we all know that ask the people who's doing this every day, you mm. will find a solution or a much better way. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes as an engineer, I'm an engineer myself. We can have very complicated solutions. Mm. Uh, expensive and it doesn't work anyhow. Um, mm. It's very often mistake by myself. Go mm. and look, talk to right. people. Right. Yes. So, yeah, and we can say what is important to underline when we talk about lean or whatever we call it, uh, the system, is that in, when you go to, to manufacturing or, or where it happens, there you everything goes together because uh, if you should be a very good r d uh, department it should be also except or um, or other things you should show with the product it should be easy to assemble easy to produce and i will say in manufacturing that's the mirror of everyone and you need to start to study there if you will be really uh, successful management in in, in uh, changing the operations that's what great, great. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, my takeaway here is uh, what you just said. Uh, the flow is a mirror of, of leadership, mm -hmm. and it's a mirror of, of the uh, the corporation of the whole company. <clears throat> and uh, leaders must go to 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 the flow and observe and and really study study really deeply. I think we have something here to learn how how much there is to pick up and and. Uh, and also how very strong improvements can come in very short time. Yeah. Thank you uh, very much, Yes. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.